The Mississippi River is drying up water levels in some areas near historic lows. It's already impacting supply chains and... The truth is going to get uncovered. Drought has made skeletons alive. But what is the real story? What else is uncovered? Want to know then? Stay tuned till last. The Mississippi River's dry conditions have revealed a submerged world that usually stays out of view. The hulls of sunken ships and a wide array of missing nautical equipment have recently broken the surface, joining new islands that have emerged in recent weeks. The remaining tiny waterway is backed up with barges that are either stranded in the muck or waiting to make their way forward. The frightening sights has drawn many Riverside residents out on foot and in boats to take it all in. One of them is Mark Babb. He has spent his entire life in and around the Mississippi River, from childhood camping trips with his dad on its banks to adulthood jobs on towboats and as a kayak guide. Last month, he took his boat down the Mississippi River from Memphis to New Orleans and back again. During that time, he encountered sights that amazed and terrified him. Mr. Babb, who is 61 years old, commented on how different the landscape seemed. Since ancient times, people have respected and even feared the river for its power to both maintain and destroy the towns that have grown up along its banks. Recently, though, it has inspired a different kind of fear. Since the drought that has gripped much of the Midwest, High Plains and South has far-reaching repercussions that go well beyond the bizarre terrain. In some locations along the lower Mississippi, the section of the river that runs south from Cairo, Illinois, the water level is lower than it was more than 30 years ago. One of the busiest and most important streams in the country has been hampered, putting drinking water supplies at risk. And scientists have warned that the necessary heavy rains could be weeks or perhaps months away. Greenville, Mississippi, a port city of about 28,000 inhabitants in the Delta region, has had its fair share of natural disasters, including hurricanes and tornadoes, according to Mayor Eric D. Simmons. However, but we haven't seen a historic drought like what we're seeing on the Mississippi. There's good explanation for the river's nickname. The river's main stem travels over 2,350 miles from its source in Minnesota to the Gulf of Mexico, passing through 10 states en route. It drains water from an area equal to 40% of the United States. Marina manager Joe Weiss of Memphis's Mud Island stated, we're the main vein of the country while sitting on a dock that appeared like it had been dumped in a muddy parking lot. As the saying goes, this stuff is never supposed to dry out. Because of the river's extensive length, which connects soybean farms, chemical plants, and food industries, it is responsible for the transportation of about 500 million tons of cargo annually, including a considerable amount of the world's food supply. Because of the low water levels, barge traffic has slowed considerably and ships have had to drastically reduce their cargo. The price of barge transport has skyrocketed. When asked about the importance of having a well-functioning supply chain, Mike Steenhook, director of the Soy Transportation Coalition, responded, We need our supply chain to be operating at full throttle. Since the months of September through February are when soybean producers ship the vast majority of their exports. The Mississippi River usually reaches its lowest levels in the fall, but this year's decline has been more severe than usual because of a dry summer in the Midwest that prevented its tributaries from being replenished. Its shriveled condition has also allowed salt water to push in from the Gulf of Mexico, endangering the river's ability to provide drinking water to the villages along its course in Louisiana. The United States Army Corps of Engineers has spent the last month installing a sediment barrier across the riverbed to slow the seawater incursion that would otherwise be slowed by the river's downstream flow. To avoid additional barge jams, the core is also dredging. The Tennessee River Authority, which controls the river system, also said it will release water from two dams, though experts predicted just a small amount of water would flow into the Mississippi. The rain would be the most helpful thing that could happen. Forecasters have cautioned that the weather in the following weeks and months will not be good. Clint Wilson, director of the Center for River Studies at Louisiana State University, warned that low water levels in the Mississippi River would persist into the spring due to the high likelihood of a weather phenomenon known as La Nina. The dry riverbed has evoked images of the Colorado River, which is far more threatened by the current drought. The receding tide has revealed shipwrecks, plane wrecks, and even human bones. While the situation on the Mississippi isn't as dire, 
Experts say its low levels and the flash floods in Missouri and Kentucky this summer are concerning signs of what the river system could face as extreme weather events like heat waves and large storms become more common due to the climate change. As a result, there have been fresh calls for taking action to improve the river's sustainability and enacting new drought regulations, such as making federal disaster relief monies available for drought response. The interest in what the low water levels have revealed is intriguing, but it is not totally welcome. The marina owner on McKellar Lake, a tributary of the Mississippi River near Memphis, Rita Stanley, threatened to call the police last week when inquisitive onlookers trespassed on her property and even climbed with children onto a sunken ancient casino boat that had been freed from the water's hold. We've been having a great time, she exclaimed. Ms. Stanley's marina was twisted by the receding water. The docks buckled in some places and her office was off balance. Ms. Stanley, 73, said, I had to take those dizzy pills. Really and truly, you have to. While resting from her cleaning duties to eat fried fish and assess, with dread, all the work that still had to be done. Simply said, it's a royal pain in the rear. Box fans, house and car keys, and iPhones from multiple generations have all been discovered as a result of the drought. The 13-year-old daughter of Ms. Weiss has amassed a collection of five pairs of Ray-Ban sunglasses and $5 for each barbecue grill she rescued from the mud at the Mud Island Marina. In order to accommodate the ebb and flow of the river, the marina's floating docks are secured to tall metal poles. The docks are currently stuck in the muck. A rusty line on the poles indicated the average height of the water. A line of orange spray paint far above it indicated a 2011 peak of 47.9 feet. Mr. Babb also took river trips back then. The floods allowed kayakers to reach downtown Memphis, which usually towered over the marina from atop a cliff. Now, this is the opposite extreme, he exclaimed from his boat, a reproduction of the paddle wheelers that formerly lined the river. Mr. Babb stated, most people are born and raised with a sense of taboo. Don't go out there, referring to the river. Fortunately, I experienced the complete opposite. It was as though the mud had turned into quicksand. Mr. Weiss claims that he begged an intern who came with a local television news crew to the marina not to take the Instagram photo she wanted by stepping off the dock. The best he could tell her was, you're going to smell for two days. To avoid the harm that would be caused if the river rose more quickly and dragged the boats out of the dried ground, he hoped the water would return gently, softening the mud so the boats could ease their way back up. He mentioned that the keel of one sailboat was buried six feet deep in the muck. The water level did not appear to be rising anytime soon. On a recent morning, as he walked the pier, he kept his eyes peeled for any indication of shift. Only puddles had formed in the muck, he discovered. Hydrologist Jeff Graschel from the Lower Mississippi River Forecast Center in Slidell, Louisiana, explained that modern river conditions cannot be compared to those of the 1800s because of levees, reservoirs, and dams. Beginning in Minnesota, the Mississippi River flows south through 10 states until emptying into the Gulf of Mexico at the Louisiana border. In addition to Wisconsin and Minnesota, the boundaries of eight other states, Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, Arkansas, and Mississippi are also shared by the canal. According to Tennessee State Meteorologist Andrew Joyner, water levels in the Mississippi River dropping due to a lack of rain is nothing out of the ordinary but things have gotten far worse this time around. Over 80% of the country was abnormally dry as recently as a week ago. Many of the basins that feed into the Mississippi River in the Midwest and in the Middle South are seeing below average precipitation, according to Joyner. We typically get low water in October and early November, Graschel said, but we're having more extreme low levels on the lower part of the Mississippi than we usually do. As the water level dropped, historical artifacts became visible. Exposed were the hull of a sunken casino ship that went down in the Mississippi River last year in Memphis, Tennessee, and the skeleton of a ferry that went down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana a century ago. Some scientists blame global warming for worsening drought conditions. To what extent climate change is contributing is unclear, Joyner added. However, this phenomenon is consistent with the trend toward longer and more widespread drought across the country. Commercial traffic relies heavily on the Mississippi River. Thousands of barges transport fuel, coal, fertilizer, and construction supplies along the 3,766-kilometer waterway. 
the usage of barges is preferable to that of vehicles or trains because of the savings and reduced environmental impact. Although barge traffic down the Mississippi is slow because of low water levels, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is dredging to keep a route open for the ships. The river is a huge economic driver and crucial transportation corridor for our manufacturing and agricultural sector and part of international trade, Joyner added. Agricultural exports like corn, wheat and soybeans are being moved downriver for export, explained Deborah Calhoun, senior vice president of the Waterways Council, a Washington, D.C.-based public policy group. Calhoun told VOA that as a result of the conflict in Ukraine, global buyers are coming to the United States to purchase our agricultural products, while European countries are buying coal for energy to make up for the shortfall in supply from Russia. There is no crystal ball, according to the experts, so we can only make educated assumptions about when the rains will begin. Grashel acknowledged that there had been rain in the preceding two weeks, but he emphasized that it was insufficient. As Joyner put it, unless we see good rainfall, we could have issues with barge traffic for quite a while. Still, we hope that these situations will get better soon, hoping for the betterment of people out there. This time, and those scenes are getting scary day by day. Many unanswered questions are arising and so many people are discussing their point of view and positive or negative possibilities. So many words, yet truth is covered on the surface of Earth. Screaming out loud, yet people are deaf. Are you scared after hearing all this? What questions are you asking yourself? Do you want to go there, or you just want to see in social media? Too many things in mind, yet all are hidden. Do let us know your views in the comments section. We are waiting for your questions and answers. And please do like and share this video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informational videos and hit the bell icon so you can get every information instantly.